Does anyone else find this just so hashtag relatable? I mean, you work so hard toward your goals. You just keep putting one foot in front of the other. You toil and strive. But in the end, all you want, all your efforts are for naught. And it was just a huge act of futility. Futility, a new fragrance by F. Luffy. No? Just me? <laughs> okay. Uh, so you may be wondering, oh man, what's up with the Debbie Downer intro? What's going on here? Well, I have some bad news. See, this episode, number 27, it uh, encountered some technical difficulties. And uh, as such, uh, the video was just not good enough to share with you. The frame rate on it was about five frames per second. That's just ridiculously low. <laughs> just way too low. So, uh, but I didn't, it was, a, it was an awesome episode and I'm so disappointed. I was so disappointed that you guys were going to miss it because I would, I would have just said, oh, okay, you know, I will just go ahead and just, you know, go on to episode number 28. I'll just explain, well, I would have called it 27, but I'll just explain, well, I had technical difficulties, so you guys aren't going to be able to see um, what happened in the last episode, but we got so much done. We did so much in this episode that I had thought, no, nah, I can't, I can't not take you through the journey, through, through the wondrous journey of Accurize on this episode. So I thought, okay, well, I will put it together as kind of like a slideshow for you. And some of you are probably thinking, oh gosh, <laughs> a slideshow, no. Well, you can just carry on to episode 28 when it comes out. But I think for this episode, we are going to have a fairly accurate, dramatic retelling of events and stuff for episode 27. So I hope you guys like it. <laughs> I hope I never have to do it again. But here you go. Our tale unfolds on the dawning of a glorious new day in the point of desolation. Accurize, our intrepid hero, sets out to explore the distant lighthouse. As he nears his destination, he is greeted by his majestic spirit animal, Dave, who promptly flees from him into the path of a hungry wolf. Accurize gives chase determined to rescue the mighty stag from the jaws of his enemy. But before he can launch his attack, he hears the deer's unmistakable death rattle. Accurize falls to his knees in despair, shaking his non-existent fists in rage at the sky and shouting, Why did you have to take Dave? Why couldn't it have been me? Inspired by his gut-wrenching cries, the wolf decides that he might just be in the mood for human flesh after all, and he approaches the distraught man. 
Acurize, sensing danger, leaps to his feet and draws his weapon, determined to avenge Dave's death or take a small condition hit to his coat and pants trying. But as the wolf's face looms in his sight, he is suddenly struck by an uncanny sense of deja vu. Can it be? But how? I... I saw you die, he gasped. The wolf growls menacingly in reply. Quickly referencing his handy Wolf to English pocket translation guide, he discovers that means, Hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Akurai is overcome by a deep sense of shame and regret, but he quickly gets over it when he hears his tummy grumbling. Inigo soon follows his father into death, and Akurai rushes up the hill to deliver a moving, albeit brief, soliloquy in remembrance of his fallen friend. But just as he's set to begin, Akurai hears the sounds of pursuit in the hills above him. Already held in the grips of an unholy bloodlust, Akurai charges in to do battle. His eyes burn with the molten fury of a thousand suns, and as his foe turns to face him, the wolf quickly realizes that his lupine strength is no match for some guy who can spew liquid hot magma from his eye sockets. He wisely scurries away in fear. Akurai's approaches the wolf's latest conquest, only to recognize Dave's somewhat less majestic older brother Steve, who borrowed 50 bucks from him that one time and never paid it back. There will be no soliloquies for Steve. After harvesting the deer's meat and more, Akurai descends the hill to do the same to Dave. Hey, it's survival. Dave would understand. But before he even reaches the semi-frozen carcasses, he is confronted by another angry growl to his left. Flipping once more through his pocket translation guide, he interprets this one to mean, Dude, you made me look like a fool in front of those stupid little rabbits. I have a reputation to protect, and now they're all laughing at me with their stupid, squeaky little laughs. Not cool, man. Not cool. Akurai once again, overcome with shame and regret, swiftly apologizes with an arrow to the face. Because that's how Akurai do. Once the swath of death and destruction is cleared, Akurai realizes his pack is too heavy to carry back to the boat, for nightfall is now upon him. He trudges painstakingly up to the stoop of the lighthouse where he stops to catch his breath. It is there, standing perfectly still, on completely level ground, that Akurai experiences a mysterious, although relatively minor, injury to his lower extremity that wrenches an anguished cry from his lips. The product of a long line of special snowflakes, Akurai draws on all the grit and salt that pours through his veins and he bravely mounts the stairs on his toddler-sized ankles to rest the night away amidst the tears. The next morning, Akurai, now fully recovered, begins his first of many trips back to the Riken. The rest of his day is spent uh, pretty much like this. Knowing that he will need more wood in order to cook his growing stores of tasty animal flesh, he takes one more journey this one to Little Island. He clears his fill of cedar limbs, but as he completes his final task of the day, the mystical Little Island deer, the most delicious deer of all, appears on the horizon. Not one to let opportunity pass, Akurai takes aim and misses. But all is not lost, for the deer threw his head back so violently in laughter at Akurai's blunder that he appears to have skewered himself on his own antlers. Akurai follows the trail of blood, for as it turns out, the mystical little island deer was actually quite corporeal after all, and Akurai fills his satchel 
with his precious offerings of meat and entrails. The sky dims, and the wind begins to howl as Acurize is beset by a sudden raging blizzard. He yet again takes refuge inside the safety of the rent walls of the Riken, where he passes his time mending his clothes and dreaming about all the arrowheads he's going to make in the next episode. A gripping tale, am I right? And that production value, I mean, wow. Huh? Just wow. <laughs> well, guys, I'm sorry that this video was so short, but it's back to business as usual. So I will be starting on episode 28 immediately following this one. So, um, hope you guys enjoyed it if you did leave a like comment and subscribe and i will see you guys in the next episode where we will i believe be starting on the arrowheads finally fingers crossed so anyhow i will see you guys next time bye bye